What's up guys? I'm here today to answer a bunch of common questions I get as a nutrition coach and a personal trainer. So let's not waste time, let's get right into it. The first question I have is what is the best lifestyle for fat loss and muscle gain? So the best way to achieve fat loss and muscle gain, it's kind of hard to do both at the same time, but it is not impossible, is to do a calorie restricted, high protein diet with resistance training. So the calorie restriction will help you lose weight. You wanna be eating less than your maintenance level of calories. The high protein, typically specified to be 1.8 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. So basically maxing out at 2.2 grams per kilogram or one gram per pound of body weight. That amount of high protein will help you build muscle and retain muscle because protein helps preserve and rebuild muscle mass. And then the resistance training, weight training will obviously help you improve muscle and will also help you burn fat. So the three components, calorie restricted, high protein, resistance training. The next question is, what are some healthy, easy 200 calorie snacks that our nutrition coach recommended? So basically there are many, many snacks you can have that are 200 calories that are healthy, that have uh, one of each macronutrient or just are healthy in general. I'm gonna go through a few right now. Um, A serving of Greek yogurt with fruit or nuts, uh, an ounce of cheese with an ounce of crackers, whole grain crackers, uh, one to two hard boiled eggs, a half peat of vegetables and hummus, a protein bar, or a fruit and nuts. Uh, For someone who weighs more, who wants to eat more, The snacks I listed above probably won't be as filling or as satisfying, so just increase the portion size and they will be just as good for you. Third question, where should I go if I wanna find nutrition guidelines by myself? So there are three nutrition guideline sources that we are referred to as nutrition coaches to go share with our clients. Choosemyplate.gov, the National Health Service, and the Mediterranean Diet Pyramid. You can Google any of those and they will show how much you should be eating, uh, typical serving sizes, portions for the different macros and micros and vitamins and minerals and all of that stuff. Um, Choose My Plate is from the USDA, the National Health Service is from the UK, and the Mediterranean Diet Pyramid is from the Mediterranean. (laughs) Next question. What foods should I avoid and what foods should I frequently consume when trying to reduce my risk of developing heart disease. Specifically, the foods you should limit are sodium, saturated fats, trans fats, refined grains, and sugars, which are found commonly in fast foods and junk foods. And then there are much more foods, many more foods that you should consume, which is good because you have variety. The foods that you should consume are diets with whole grains, fruits, vegetables, legumes, nuts, fish, and low-fat dairy products. So there are a lot more foods that you should consume, which is great, and they're all healthy for you. They all taste good. Okay, the next question is, what are macros? So there are three macronutrients, carbs, proteins, and fats. Each have their purpose and their function, and none of them should be excluded fully. So carbs provide energy, uh, fats provide nutrients, minerals, and vitamins and proteins rebuild muscle, although when carbs are not sufficiently in your diet, proteins don't rebuild muscle, they are instead used for energy. So carbs should make up 45 to 65% of your total calories. Proteins should make up 10 to 35% of your total calories, and fats should make up 25 to 35% of your total calories. You want to stay within those ranges You just don't want to exclude any of those fully. I know there are some diets out there that are no fat, that are no carb, that are only protein. And while those sound healthy, everything should be consumed in moderation. Um, If you want to consume the lower end of fats or the lower end of carbs, that's fine. But completely neglecting or excluding one of these macronutrients is going to be really bad for your health. They all have a purpose and they need to be included in your diet. The next question is, how are macros digested? So the different macronutrients are digested at different speeds. Carbohydrates are the most easily digested of the three macronutrients, and they digest within one to two hours of consumption. 
proteins are digested up to three to four hours after consumption, and fats are digested up to six hours after consum consumption. The next question is, what are common serving sizes and how can I determine that for myself? So common serving sizes are kind of hard to determine depending on where you're eating and what you're eating. Basically, one teaspoon equals four grams, and that can be measured out as one die or one dice. One tablespoon equals 14 grams, which can be measured out as one poker chip. A quarter cup equals 85 grams, which can be measured out as a large egg, and that's the same as three ounces. So one quarter cup equals three ounces. One full cup equals 340 grams, or a baseball, and eight to nine ounces falls below that as either 227 or 255 grams, which is equal to a large smartphone. Those numbers and those visual representations are helpful for me, and I'm sure some of you, but it's kind of hard to measure that out when you're at a restaurant, let's say. So one of the techniques they gave us to learn is the hands portion guide, which I'm going to teach you right now. One fist equals one cup of either fruits or vegetables, and the reason you say fruits or vegetables is because one cup is one typical serving size. So for protein, an open palm equals three ounces, and three ounces is a typical serving size. And similarly, two palms is six ounces, which depending on your build, six ounces might be your serving size. But just based on this uh, easy chart, we're gonna go uh, a fist is fruits and vegetables, one palm is protein. For carbs, a cupped palm is one serving, or 1.5 ounces. For dairy, one finger is one ounce. And then also for dairy, one fist equals one cup of milk. So again, a fist is a cup. For oil, a fingertip is one teaspoon. And for solid fats, one thumb equals one and a half to two tablespoons. So going back through that again, if you're at a restaurant and you're trying to figure out what servings you want, how much food you're trying to consume, uh, if you want to have a serving of fruits or vegetables, one fist. If you want to have a serving of protein, one palm. A serving of carbs is a half palm. A serving of dairy is a finger. Oil should be a fingertip. And solid fat should be one thumb. And that's an easy way to measure it wherever you are. Okay, the next question is, how do I read product nutrient claims? So there are a bunch of product nutrient claims, and they don't really make sense, so I'm going to try to make sense of it as best I can right now. A low-calorie food has 40 calories or less. A calorie-free food has less than 5 calories, so it's not completely uh, zero. <laughs> a low-cholesterol food has 20 milligrams or less of cholesterol, while a cholesterol-free food has less than two milligrams of cholesterol. Again, these are very minute quantities, so like they are actually being genuine when they say this on product nutrient claims on the labels. A low-fat food has under three grams. A reduced-fat food has 25% less fat than the original, so that's important. It, sometimes it's in relation to the original product. A low-saturated fat food has less than one gram, while a low saturated fat free food has less than one half gram. A no sugar food has less than a half a gram and a no added sugar food has no added sugar. A low sodium food has under 140 milligrams of sodium. A very low sodium food has under 35 milligrams of sodium and a sodium free food has less than five milligrams of sodium. A gluten-free food has under 20 parts per million of gluten, while a certified gluten-free food has under 10 parts per million. And finally, if you've ever seen lights, L-I-T-E, on a product nutrient claim, that means either it has 50% less fat than the original, or one third fewer calories than the original. Thanks for watching this video. I really like making these Q&A videos. It's really easy for me, and I know it helps you all out a lot. I'm gonna leave a timestamp in the description below so that you can go back to any question you want. If you have any questions that I either didn't fully explain 
or completely new questions that you just want me to answer, please leave them in the comments below and I will answer them in an upcoming video or I'll just respond to your comments. Um, thank you so much again for watching. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.